What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As you can see, it looks a little different. We're doing live rounds with no hook, live Q&A uh, on my Facebook page, Tyler Harris page, and on Motivation King's Facebook page. But I am still your host, Tyler Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow! Now, on to the questions. John. John, this is Tyler Harris, man. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I am doing well. Hey, we are uh, messing with some audio stuff right now. You're coming out of the uh, speaker, not out of my ears. Um, so bear with us for two seconds as we get it all squared away. But man, I'm excited. Sure. I'm excited. To, oh, there you are. I got you now. We're good to go. Man, I'm excited to talk to you. I know we were supposed to talk last week and I dropped the ball on that. Um, but I'm excited to talk to you now. Well, get busy. Yeah, man. So tell me what's going on with yeah. your business. Actually, tell everybody uh, about it. Like I, one of the things I love about this live rounds with no hook is uh, this can be a platform for you to kind of talk about what you're doing, what you can talk about right now. Uh, but tell everybody sure. kind of what you're doing um, as briefly as you can, and then we'll get right into the question and and then go back and forth a little bit. Yeah. Um, little uh, about uh, a little over six months ago, I started formulating a beverage uh, lightly carbonated naturally flavored, naturally sugared with uh, CBD or cannabidiol in it. And it's called Pure Active CBD. We've got four different flavors. And I uh, was trying to go the, the traditional, uh, let's say maybe old media way of advertising and uh, was hitting a lot of brick walls. Um, going that route with uh, a lot of people didn't know what CBD was and uh, just having to explain it. Um, and then, you know, they're not sure they want to advertise it on such platforms as Instagram, Facebook, etc. Uh, the next step was, you know, just trying to go different, uh, like let's do videos and, and just get people to share them. And we figured that'd be the best way to do it. And uh, started doing that a little bit and just wasn't, either I'm not hitting the right algorithms or getting the right traction, but uh, that's, that's the... Uh, the wall that I'm hitting and uh, of course you'll know, follow your videos and uh, uh, and Gary Vee as well right crushing it of course and just trying different things just trying to get as much traction or scratch at the walls as we can but it's tough to do with a with a new product you know, um, that not everyone's familiar with so, yeah man so let me jump right in right there you are exactly right and I'm so glad we're able to talk about this on here live. Um, anytime that you have a business that's new in an industry that's new uh, and there's education involved, it adds a whole nother layer uh, of difficulty. Mm -hmm. It's a whole nother layer and and that kind of puts you in uncharted territory. Um, and you're right, their traditional ways are probably not gonna work. Um, one thing that I think is interesting with especially the industry that you're, that you're going into, is that there are some incredible testimonial type stories that you have, right? Right. And that's, that's where the real joy comes from. Oh all yeah. This, just seeing, you know, like helping someone die. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah, and so tell me, and you don't have to go into detail of, of you know, any specific story, but tell me kind of the general uh, benefits that people are seeing that drink it. And let's just say the average person, let's just say me, like literally I'm sitting right now and I'm drinking a monster energy ultra red. And the reason I drink these is because they don't have carbs and sugar and I don't do carbs, um, and sugar. And you know, there's probably t terrible, terrible chemicals that are, you know, slowly killing me inside it. Uh, but I drink them all the time, like <laughs> all the time. Right. So tell me, like, what's the, what is the value proposition of, of your product just from a regular guy that may not have like specific things that I'm saying, oh, I need the CBD part of your drink, but I just like energy drinks and need energy and every now and then. Sure. So like, what's the benefit for someone like me? 
The benefit, you know, the two biggest things that I've seen from people that have been trying it is uh, anti-inflammatory uh, pain relief. Yeah. Uh, one of the testimonies we have, you know, he flat called it like ibuprofen in a bottle, <laughs> but way better for you. Um, I gave him a sample, and this is probably one of my favorite stories. Is you know, I said, "Here, take this, try it. Let me know what you think." It was one of our first rounds of flavor testing. And he came back to me uh, 10, 15 minutes later with just this big smile on his face. He's like, "I don't know what's going on, but my lower back doesn't hurt anymore, and I'm in a good mood." <laughs> uh, and so, and he, he, it, uh, it also helps with uh, a lot. Some people take it for anti-anxiety. I've had some people tell me that they've thrown their prescription medications away. I would never recommend that because I'm not sure. a doctor. But um, those are probably the two biggest ones I see is yeah. you know, people using it for uh, anti-inflammatory. And um, and so are people using it the, for you know, energy? Effect. I'm sorry, what was that? Are people using it for the energy aspect of it? Uh, let's say, I'm, I'm never is there caffeine? Like what? Drink. I guess you, know, you didn't actually say you didn't actually say energy drink, did you? Yeah, I, I've been careful to label that. I mean, energy comes from sugar, yeah. so um, we're under we have nine grams of sugar or less, and that all comes from the natural flavors of the you know lemon lime and orange flavor. Okay, and um, there's some other flavors as well, but all the sugar is just already naturally there. We don't add any sweeteners. There's uh, no added. Um, uh, not then they say minerals, but uh, yeah, yeah. No, uh, no extra, no extra stuff like that this is chopped full of. I'm sure. As well, so. Yeah. It's, well, uh, you know, I know there's a fine well, line that you have to walk with those testimonials as far as being, um, uh, what do they call them? Like certain type of like medical. Like you can't say like, oh, hey, wait. this drink cures inflammation. This drink has been shown, but you can tell stories. Like you can have testimonials. Right. And man, inflammation. That's, that's basically what I do is yeah. say what people are experiencing from it. I mean, yeah, we're, it's basically labeled as a supplement. I mean, we're yeah, not sure. in t intended to treat, prevent, cure, diagnose any disease. It yeah. does it on every can. So, Yeah, and inflammation, um, man, like inflammation, in inflammation, inflammation is the root of all evil. Like everything yeah. that can happen bad to your body starts with inflammation like that's a that's a huge mm -hmm. thing but i think there's also like a weird stigma uh to cbd like it is it's still new in this uh cbd space uh where literally like someone i promise you I promise you someone's watching this video and they're going cbd did he just say cannabis and they're like and they said that someone, someone drank drank it and they felt good were they high like like literally you're gonna right. have people that like because people are uneducated about all this stuff and so it's how That's do you it. get that awareness out to the mass market because with anything you don't want to have a super 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 narrow niche of people that have this education in this area and also have a need for this certain area with inflammation and anxiety and also have, and, and all of a sudden you've gotten like an entire population that could buy your product is like 15,000 people. Like you want it to where everybody is, is open and willing uh, to try it just exactly. to kind of see what happens. I'm after Main Street, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, uh, have you, have you, the looked, have that, you looked at the actual um, dispensary network? Um, with all the different dispensaries, since people that go there obviously already are somewhat attuned um, to CBD and some of the powers with that. Right, and that, we did uh, we did break a channel last week with that, um, waiting to you know throw contracts back and forth. But that's yeah. uh, that's one route that we went was the dispensaries, bait shops, things like that. Um, hey, where where can was, uh, uh, where can people go right now? Um, or not right now, as soon as they get done watching this. <laughs> but where can people go um, to find out more information about it? Because I want to make sure people can go. Because I think your story, because if I remember correctly, from like the very beginning, your story with the farm and and uh, switching over um, to to this as your main crop on the farm. Like I think it's a very interesting story, right? Yeah, I mean, that, to be honest with you, I'm, I shut down. I'm sitting in a tractor right now. That's working awesome. Ground to uh, to get ready to plant. I love industrial that. hemp. So, I love that. Uh, once I saw you call, I was like, I better pull it back and put it in idle. But yeah, that's uh, then go to pureactivecbd.com. Okay, pureactivecbd.com. Uh, right pureactivecbd.com. Mm-hmm. And um, right now we have a, I call it a no-brainer offer. You can try your first can for a dollar, awesome. and we'll reach out to you. Um, we're out of stock at the moment. We gave away all our, all our uh, 
trial run, but we're getting some more co-packs. Right. And uh, we'll, we'll get them back out to you. If and so what you're, interest, and what you're doing there is you're just, you're just hoping to collect a bunch of interesting and impactful stories, right? Like, like yeah, yeah. I, I drank it and That's I felt it. this, and I drank it, and, and this happened. I drank it and I felt fantastic. It's just trying to get all that feedback. Exactly. That's what we're after. We want that content as well. Yeah. And just keep pushing that out there. Yeah, one thing um, one thing I would definitely do, and, and you you certainly did it with me. Um, I don't know if I'm the best uh, for that, but I would definitely keep reaching out to other influencers, um, especially that may have more knowledge of that space, and sending them out samples. I think would be huge, um, because yeah. the reality is it becomes a numbers game at some point, and a lot of that has to depend on how much capital you have to send out you know these free samples. Uh, but you send it out to you know 500 influencers, you're going to get someone that's like someone that does have that reaction that's super positive, or someone that just gets it, someone that sees the business side of it, and uh, and all of a sudden it's just Katie bar the door, like it's 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 wide open. Um, yeah. So that's that's something that I mean, you're probably already doing that, but that's something that I would go extremely. That's where my focus would be, uh, is to finding those okay. people that are willing to do that, um, and just sending free samples out to them. That would be that would be huge. And, and okay. a, a handwritten note with a free sample goes a long way um, okay. as to as to why you chose them to send it to. Um, hey, I've been following you know you on Instagram, and uh, I really love how you talk about this. And I'd love for you to just try my product. Here's some of the research behind it, so you know what's going into your body. Uh, but I think that this is something that could help you, or I think that this is something that could help your wife, or your son, or your you know your mother, or whatever that may be. And I would all I would ask for in return is just some feedback um, after drinking the product. And I think you'd be blown away. It'll take some time because because you've got the delivery time of getting it out there and them actually getting it and, and consuming it and then getting back to you. But I think, you know, 60, 90 days down the road, you'll be blown away, blown away. Okay. Yeah, that's, we'll, uh, I'll take that every bit of it to heart and that's when we'll start attacking uh, this week. Yeah, and I'd, love to, and I'd love to try it, it too. You know, so whenever you gotta, get... got to remind myself that a, a hundred no's equals one yes sometimes. Exactly, and, and yeah, um, you're exactly right. And and I love the no's because the quicker you can get to a no, the quicker you can get to a yes. Um, that's it. But definitely send when you get uh, your um, when you get back from the co-packer. Definitely send me a a can. I'd love to try it. I'll put it on the vlog and all that good stuff for you. Okay, man, right. I really appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate man. Time today. Start that tractor back up. I love that. All right, we'll do. Yeah, all right, man. Thanks, Tyler. Have a good day. Bye bye. Who's this? Jorge? Jorge. Hello? Hey, this is Tyler Harris, man. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you, yourself? I am doing very well. Hey, tell me, what's your first name? Jorge? Yeah, my name is Jorge. Okay, good deal. Where are you from, Jorge? I'm from Calif Santa Maria, California. Okay, very good, man. Did you have a particular question in mind? Yeah, yeah, I was, I'm looking at it live, um, your question, your answers, you know, kind of um, live right now. Yeah. And um, my question is that uh, I'm starting this heat uh, embroidery. It's my whole company one is going to be called West Coast Graphic Arts and Embroidery. Um, so it's going to be involved with embroidery, um, graphic arts, design, art, different forms of art. And I've been focusing on both, both of them very much. Yeah. Um, I've also been um, inspiring because uh, I think about maybe not that long, maybe less than a year, I found you guys, Motivation Kings, and it really has inspired me so much on to a whole new level. It really pushed That's me awesome. to the limit. It kind of pushed me so far in this, into my career. Awesome. Uh, my question is that I have established, well, Here's a little bit more information. I have established distributing supply already and now kind of have the backbone of the business, uh, how it's going to operate efficient. Um, my question is, because I, it, this has been so inspirational to me, is there a way for me to gain license rights or copyrights or any of these motivational quotes or be able to heat press and heat press on shirts, products, or anything kind of like branding? 
um, just to kind of motivate other other small entrepreneurs because um, I ha I also like to inspire other people. I have inspired maybe like six people so far that I know that started up their own small site business That's awesome. with embroidery because I teach embroidery. I'm an embroidery specialist. Awesome. And I also helped start one of my friends who um, just started a, a small dojo. So I'm helping him start up his his dojo. Now he has it. He's taking people in. He's motivated. He's one on one training. Um, but my whole main question is, how can I get more? Um, how can I gain like license rights or anything? Kind of, is that possible? So you're talking about with Motivation Kings. That's correct. Yeah, so I mean, so here's the thing, like with Motivation Kings, and, and number one, uh, thank you so much for the kind words. Um, I love when, you know, Motivation Kings is just full of just constant, just shoving motivation and inspiration down people's throats. Um, so number one, thank you um, for your appreciation in that, man. That means a lot to me, um, putting this stuff out there. So um, that's awesome. Um, number two, when you look at this whole space of motivation, inspiration, like all this stuff, it's hard to say what, who really owns anything, right? Um, okay. You know, a lot of this stuff are, are quotes from people, um, things that I've heard that, you know, may have someone said, someone said, someone said, and now all of a sudden it gets 15 people down the line, and it's like, who actually originally said it? I have no idea. Um, when it comes to the actual licensing part, um, I don't know the answer as far as you selling something from a quote that's on a particular post with Motivation Kings and the legality behind that on your end. On my end, I could care less. Like, if you wanna put any post that we do on a shirt and sell it, like, by all means, um, go for it. Um, I don't know the legality though, and that's where you'll, you'll wanna check uh, with an attorney, um, someone that specializes in like um, intellectual property and, and all that good stuff um, to make sure that you're not gonna do something that could potentially come back against you. Like all of a sudden you post a certain phrase and someone has that trademarked and, and lo and behold, that's the one shirt that you're just like gangbusters, just just crushing it with. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they come back and, and they take that away from you and potentially fines and all that kind of stuff. So I can't speak uh, to that side of it other than the fact that I always trust good counsel um, from, from a legal representative whenever I look to do anything like that. But, but as far as like permission or, or looking from anything from me, from Motivation Kings, like by all means, if there's something on our page that you love and it resonates with you and you think it'll resonate with other people, uh, I have no problem uh, with that whatsoever. I just, uh, I can't on my end be held liable if any of that <laughs> is trademarked yeah. by somebody. Um, because a lot of it is quotes from people and, uh, and different things like that. Um, but as far as like the motivation kings um, stuff, like, you know, I certainly, you know, don't think that you should create an entire line of clothing called Motivation Kings. <laughs> but like, you know, any of the, any of the key, any of the key kind of principles or sayings or quotes or, you know, any of that kind of stuff, like even the images, like all that's yeah. very fair game. It's, you know, I think I am of the abundance mindset. And I think anyone that would say, no, 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 you can't do that is very lack mindset. And uh, I just don't think that that's a good place to live in. Uh, I wanna be in a world of abundance and think that we can all, um, we can all make a bunch of money doing what we wanna do. And if that helps you make some money doing what you wanna do, then, then that's, uh, that's awesome. Absolutely, because in my whole philosophy here, because I have people that wanted to, get into my business and I, I give them an introduction of what my business is going to look like the whole perspective yeah. and there's some I wanted to get into it for their own personal gains and even though they have no relation or whatsoever in that kind of field or no experience and by me motivating them they they see the picture they see the motivation and they feel that motivation but the thing is that a lot of them they want to uh, invest for their personal gain and then have and have 50 percent let's say of the profit gains and after i invested about maybe 20 to thirty thousand dollars in my own equipment it feels almost unfair to give up my profit profit over somebody who has no experience and wants to claim 50 percent and help me and invest 
And I took a lot of uh, advice from other other small, other small entrepreneurs that mm -hmm. they thought, well, it's sometimes it's not good to partner up. Sometimes it just creates a problem. If it's with family, it creates a family problem and just so on and so on. Sometimes you kind of have to do it on your own yeah. because there are people out there that are going to want to push you down or either to say, you know, uh, they can say, oh, it's not possible. And I always had the philosophy that nothing is ever impossible. Everything is possible. You know, I love to work hard for it and, and achieve it. Yeah. It's the way that goes. And I believe that, you know, I turned them down. So I said, you know what, here's my philosophy. I'm built, I have a 2,400 square foot, uh, two stories. It's, you know, it's a nice shop. There's a lot of this. I'm building it. So what happened is I'm trying to find more, like, real motivated like people like one I got for a good example I got a young guy who's 27 years old he he's in martial arts Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for so many years he's gained a lot of medals he's gained his uh, he's almost one step to getting a black belt but the thing he was independent going to gyms he just knows where to play to, to practice so I say you know what I have the space let me motivate you more so I gave him uh, the space to put his uh, to start his dojo and I told him here's the thing be prepared to fail tomorrow because today I mean be prepared to fail to tomorrow because today we have to be prepared for us for that day because that's you awesome. don't know what you know that's, so, a, that's awesome man like I think with everything that you just said I think you're 1000% on the right track and I think all of that like you can you can take advice from a hundred different entrepreneurs and they'll tell you a hundred different things but at the end of the day it's all what you feel in your gut and I have a feeling yeah. just from talking to you right now that your gut's probably pretty uh, in line uh, with the right thing to do and so I would just always follow your gut don't let somebody tell you that you should or shouldn't do something based on their past and their experiences, you have to kind of feel those things out for yourself um, and do what's best for you. Uh, this idea that the king eats first, man, you got to take care of yourself and not until you take care of yourself can you go take care of that guy with his dojo and not until you take care of yourself can you go take care and motivate and inspire all these other people because it'll become from the overflow of your cup yeah. being full that they're able uh, to be inspired as well, man. So just keep that, keep that kind of front of mind. Uh, as you move forward for sure um, well um, like because I let him have that little space where he started his motivation went up to a thousand that's the awesome. following and the following weekend he had a tournament in Vegas he went over there you know the tournament and he brought home first place wow. to my shop that's and awesome. that's how that I saw an inspiration in him and I said here you know and I told him before here's the thing my friend um, I'm not here to take your personal gain, your personal profit. This is your life. You're in control. You're in charge. Now go get it. Go crush goals. And, and I'm not going to fall, but I'm here to inspire and motivate. And I've been doing that for other people, too. But, and also for my own self as well, because I'm going to really feel good where I'm at, like at where, what I do. You know, I love what I do. That's and awesome. I don't, I don't like to push people down or, or talk down to other people. And if they're doing better than me, that's great. They're doing, I'm already feel comfortable where I'm at, you know, Absolutely. there's nothing that can take that away from me. That's and awesome, man. That, and it sounds uh, like what you did, man, you gave him a hand up, not a hand out. And, uh, and that's super important. Uh, but man, I, I really appreciate you calling in. I appreciate um, you engaging with the content, man. We're gonna jump onto the next call, but I've really enjoyed this conversation. Best of luck to you um, with your business, man. It sounds like you got some awesome things going. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for your feedback, your approach, absolutely. and um, I really appreciate it. it. It just keeps me motivated. Just this just awesome. literally set one fire just to keep, uh, just for the first time being in contact with you. And yeah, man. I mean, this this is just this is like the cherry on top. Yep, that's awesome, man. Well, thank you so much, and uh, and best of luck to you. Yeah, you too. Thank you very All much. Right. See you, brother. All righty. Bye bye. Is this for my page? Hello. Hey, is this Mike? Yeah. Hey, Mike, this is Tyler Harris. How are you, ma'am? Good. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing good. We got you live here on uh, Facebook and wanted to see if you had a question. Yeah, yeah. So my question, um, I've been following you guys for a while uh, and kind of paying attention to, to the motivational stuff that you post out there, which is some great content. 
Um, my question to you is, I was always, at a young age, I was always a really, really motivated guy. Uh, over the years of being an entrepreneur and, and just the stress of the life, I've kind of lost that that kind of drive and, and inspiration. I'm just kind of wondering if there's if there's a, a tactic or a tool or something that you might suggest to, to kind of get that relit and, and bring the motivation back. Yeah, man, and that's such an important question because there's so many people uh, that are in that exact same spot. And uh, chances are there's someone that's going to watch this that's like, yeah, he's talking about me. <laughs> um, right, right. I think you just got to remember why you started. Um, you got to go back to, to that why. Um, one of my favorite lines ever, uh, I think it says, uh, if your why is big enough, your excuses won't be. And, right. and I think that that's so important. And that's something that has to be, and this is something that's not talked about a lot. It's something that has to be revisited and recalibrated uh, regularly. Um, because whys change, right? Like, you know, your why when you're 22 becomes different when you're 32 and certainly different when you're 52. Um, but a right. lot of people only take the time to sit down and write these things out, which is key. Uh, but they only take the time to sit down and write these things out when they're first getting started with a business or with a career or whatever that may be. And as time goes on, uh, that that fades and maybe it's a different why and you could be hanging on to this why from when you were younger uh, that may not really have anything to do with your passion right now or or your purpose uh, right now so the the best thing that i i would tell you is just to take some time for yourself and to just sit down and and just write out what's important um, this this phrase what do you want like what do you want uh, it's such a simple <laughs> phrase, and it was, uh, if, you, if you follow Sean Whalen, uh, if you don't, I definitely would, um, but he asked uh, me that question, and it just kind of changed everything for me, and it's such a simple question, but man, it's so freaking complicated to answer. <laughs> it's just like, what, it is. But it is. what do you, I mean, so like for you, like what do you, like ultimately, what do you want in life? So, so my why, I mean, fr from the time I was, you know, 14, 15 years old, I'm, I'm 33 now, but from a young age, it was always my why was to be successful. Yeah. Um, from that point, uh, I've built a, a pretty successful construction company and we do very well. Um, but with that, and then, like I said, just, uh, just kind of feeling overwhelmed with everything. I think I've lost my motivation and, and I'll be honest with you, I've kind of lost the interest in the business that I have now. It used to be something that I love doing, but sure through the trials and tribulations, even though we've become successful, I've kind of just lost that, that drive and that passion that I once had. And I, I do think I've, I've been considering taking some time for myself and just kind of re reevaluating things. Like, is this where I want to be right now? I've, I've achieved this goal, but now it's kind of like a plateau. Like where, yeah. what do I do now? Where do I get to, you know, kind of, I feel like I'm in a, a little bit of a transitional period of, you know, yeah, I think it's time for something new and time to chase a different goal or something. Yeah. Well, I mean, the encouraging thing is like those transformational or sorry, you think you said transitional um, phases of life. Like those are the most freaking exciting, um, which is an encouraging thing. Uh, but I think I think you're right. Like like you said, you know, your why was to be successful, but you need to you need to get really super detailed on what that actually means, um, because to be successful, eh, okay. To be successful for what? And what is success look like? Not like a particularly a dollar amount. Um, you know, money is certainly a good scorecard. Um, but, right. but what does that mean? Like, I wanna be successful so that my wife and kids, this, like I want my wife not to have to work or I want my daughter to go to this school and I want this, I want to be able to, you know, one week every quarter go on a vacation with my family or like get super, super specific on what that success means because it sounds like you've gotten to the point where you've gotten some of that success, but now you're like, okay, what's next and does what's next right. and, and does what's next, uh, does what next um, have to do with the business that you already made successful? Because a lot of times, 
you know, I, I, I'm me personally, like I'm crazy ADD. Like once I succeed in something, it's like, okay, what's next? What's next? What's next? What's next? And it's, it's not something that maybe can sustain you uh, for the rest of your life. I'm 33 as well. So I can certainly understand um, where you're coming from. My, my goals in my twenties were very different than my goals um, now. But I don't think it's necessarily something where you have to like go take 10 days and go hike the Appalachian Trail and, you know, find yourself. But I think it's the guru at the top of the mountain. Yeah. Right. Like, but I think it's I think it's taking intentional time every day um, to to think about it. Like I just recently started meditating and it's it's literally been a game changer. I've only been doing it for nine days, but like starting my day every morning. And it's just 10 minutes. I'm using this app called Headspace. It's super easy. But just taking 10 minutes in the morning um, to start your day uh, intentionally. And for you, that could be, you know, what do I want? What is my purpose? What am I supposed to be doing? Um, And taking 10 minutes every morning, first thing, um, just to think about it. Um, would be an incredible way to start your day and to kind of refocus your day and kind of realign yourself with what you really, really want. Because when you say, what do you want? And you say to be successful, that's not really a good answer. Like what you well, want it, it, should it be is, like what that success gives you the ability to do. Right. Right. Exactly. And, and that's kind of, you know, what I've lost over the years. Yeah. Like I said, I, I, I got into construction really young um, just knowing that I didn't want to have a nine to five job. I've never had, you know, I've never worked for anybody. I've always been self-employed since, Mm -hmm. since, you know, high school. Um, and then just, just through the kind of the rat race of, you know, doing the, doing the entrepreneur thing, working, you know, eyes open to eyes closed type of days, you know, you lose track. Do you have a family? Do I? Yeah. You got any kids? Yeah. I got two kids, a son and a daughter. How old are they? My daughter is two and a half and my son's 14. Wow, that's awesome. I mean, dude, just for me, like my, my what do I want and my why and everything has like completely flipped over the last couple of weeks and making them the priority and having everything that I do be for them and it's changed my outlook on everything. Um, yeah, and I mean, that's originally, you know, what I got into that for me, my, my son being 14, obviously, you know, we had him at a fairly young age, yeah. and that kind of, kind of boosted that. How long? You, you know, how long have you been married? Succeed type of mentality, and then you know, with working as much to be successful, you, I kind of lost. How do I put it? I kind of lost time, you know, spending time with my family because I was working so hard to yeah. to make the business successful to provide for them. Yeah. Now that the business is successful. I'm looking back at it on time lost, basically, and my daughter being so young, I don't want to go through those same paces. So I definitely want to make some kind of change as far as how much I work, but that yep. doesn't mean that I want to be, you know, less successful financially. So yeah, I think dude. See, and how long are you, are you there. married? Are you married? What? Am I married? No. Yeah. Okay. And are the kids with you? How how often do you get to see them? Um, every day. Okay, dude, like, I'm so glad the conversation took this turn. Like, this is where I hoped it would, it would go to, um, man, that needs to be like what you just talked about. Like that needs to be what you're constantly thinking about is how now that you can work smarter and not harder. Like I'm, I'm telling you, I was you, um, up until like two weeks ago, like literally, (laughs) um, like I, I even came up with this phrase a few months ago, because I'm a salesman, so like I sold myself on this hard, this idea of like just run, 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 faster, 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 more, 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 and then once I build to where I need to build, then I'll be able to spend all this time with my with my child. And I finally, like I even had this this uh, phrase that I came up with, and I said, you know, I travel away because I travel all the time. I'm 238 nights in a hotel last year, and I used to talk about the fact that I travel away for my family not travel away from my family. And the first time I said it, I was like, oh my God, I'm the biggest genius. It's the smartest thing I've ever said. Like, it's all about them. It's all about them. And like, why am I doing all this stuff on social media? It's all about them. It's all about them. It's building a legacy for them. And then finally, right. finally, finally, I had this realization and I, and I asked myself, I was like, what kind of legacy am I really leaving if my daughter's gonna have to watch videos to hear the things that should be coming out of my mouth to her in person? 
Right. And exactly. it just that's, literally that's just, at now. yeah, it just changed everything. And so it's, it's trying to figure out, you know, with your business and whether it's with your current business or, or potential future businesses, um, but how you can work less, make the same, if not more, and be able to utilize that time with your family. Um, and that's, man, the cool thing is like, you're 33, I'm 33, the fact that we've realized this right now, like you're saving yourself from burning everything to the ground over the next 20 years. Um, the fact right. that you're even like thinking about this stuff now um, shows a lot about your integrity and you as a person um, because you could wake up and be 43 real quick and, uh, and all of a sudden, that's, that's all of a sudden now you got a 12 year old girl, just, not a two year old. One day it hit me like, wow, this is, this is all going by way too fast. Oh like, yeah. I need to, I bet. need to figure something different out. Yeah. And so, man, I think, um, one, one like tactical thing, if I could uh, give you a tactical, um, answer here, um, look up Sean Whalen. Are you familiar with him? I think I've heard the name before. Okay, it's Sean Whalen. He has an organization called Lions Not Sheep. And he talks about this concept of uh, core four. And it's the four areas of your life, uh, your power, which is your body, your passion, which is your relationships, your purpose, which is your mind, and your production, which is your business. And it's breaking things down into 90-day increments where you've got three goals in each of those areas. And I'm telling you right now, I'm nine days in and my life is so much more free. (laughs) And so much, um, I'm just happier, full of more gratitude. And it's little things like implementing the meditation. And I'm doing a gratitude journal in the morning. And these are the things that I used to laugh at. Um, that I'm now doing and I'm like, holy crap, this actually does put me in a completely different mindset throughout the day. Um, spending, you know, more time with my wife, you know, on the passion side, like a non-negotiable date night every Saturday night, a non-negotiable date with my daughter who's 20 months old. She won't even really understand yet, but will grow to every Sunday. Um, do a FaceTime on my phone with my wife every day, like certain things that become non-negotiable over 90 days. Then every 90 days you kind of relook at that. Um, I really think it, it could put things in a really good space for you. Um, it's been literally life changing for me just in the last nine days of going all in on it. Yeah, that all makes a lot of sense. I'll definitely check into it. Yeah, um, and what I'll do, what did you um, say Jason, that app was that, that you were book? using for the meditation? Uh, it's called Headspace, and man, it's so easy um, when you download it because it just it's like guided. Hey, what I'm gonna do too? This is Sean's book right here. I don't know if you're looking at the screen anymore or not, but I'm holding up Sean's book, um, and this goes over core four in detail and explains exactly how to do it. Um, I'll send you one of these. So if you message me your address, I'll send you one of these in the mail. Um, okay. And it, it goes all through core four and man, it's, it is, it's, it's life changing, um, because it's simple. Like that's, we need simple. Like I'm not a complicated guy. I'm not the smartest guy in the world. Like I need a simple process to build structures Same, in my life. Very, very simple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's what this is, man. So I'll send this to you in the mail, um, but definitely download that app headspace. It's uh, it's really awesome. And, uh, and I appreciate you calling. Where are you from, man? Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I used to live in Pittsburgh. I used to live in um, uh, Wexford. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, 20 minutes up the road from me. Yeah, I was young. I was in like the second and third grade. Uh, I was a big wrestler growing up, though. I remember I wrestled at uh, Pine Richland, which is where I would have okay. gone to. Which is where I would have gone to high school. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, Small very good. World. Yeah, man. I appreciate you calling in, and uh, and I will definitely make sure you send me your address, and I'll shoot you this uh, book in the mail. Absolutely. I appreciate the info. Yeah, man. Have a good day. You too. Thanks. It's so hot in here. It's Adam. Adam, this is Tyler Harris, man. How are you? Good, brother. How are you? I am doing well, man. I appreciate you uh, engaging with the content over the last, uh, it's been a while. I've seen your name a million times and I really, that means a whole lot to me, man. I love what you do, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Where are you from? Uh, Northwest Ohio. Okay. Uh, What part? Uh, Fremont, Ohio. uh, Toledo area. Okay. Very good. I used to live, uh, when I was little, I lived up in the Cleveland area in um, Hudson, Ohio. Oh, yeah. I've been to Hudson. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it is beautiful. Funny, random story before we get into your 
question. I had lived in Pittsburgh, which I just talked to the last caller about, um, and we were going to be moving to the Cleveland area. My dad uh, was working in Twinsburg, uh, Ohio, and we went over there to look at houses one day before we moved. And we're sitting in this restaurant, and all of a sudden we start looking around, and we're like, what the heck is going on right now? And thought we were in the twilight zone. And all of a sudden we realized and had no idea that this even existed, but it was Twins Day in, twin, <laughs> in Twinsburg. Yeah. And we had no idea. So all of a sudden we're walking around this town, and there's like 10,000 twins. And it was the, <laughs> mo- it was the, it was the creepiest slash coolest moment ever. <laughs> I know. No, funny thing, too. I, I've got twin daughters. And oh, uh, nice. I've been meaning, to, they're 11 now. I've been meaning to make it up there. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it just hasn't happened. So. Yeah. Are they identical? Yeah, yeah, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, they're gorgeous. Very cool. So, what yeah. was your question, man? Um, okay, well, yeah, basically, I was wondering, you know, what is it that you do uh, to continually build value in yourself? And in a second part to that question is, how do you translate that value um, to the situations that build your success? Um, because I, I, you know, I mean, I'm sure you, you've got a, a good understanding uh, that, uh, you know. Your value, you have to value yourself before anybody else will. Yeah. Ultimately. Yeah. And so, you know, somebody who's coming from somebody who's struggled with his, uh, you know, I've struggled with my image over the years. Yep. I've struggled with my self worth. Um, what what is it that you do? Because I'm I'm assuming it's something that's got to be done at least subconsciously on a daily basis. Man, that's that's a great question, and I'm sitting here trying to think of like. The best way to answer it, I think the best way to do that is just to tell you, um, first off, man, it's something that I've struggled with, um, especially the self-image um, part. Like, I was a fat, chubby kid, like, in the eighth grade, seventh grade, sixth grade. Like, I was, like, the kid that, like, didn't want to go to the pool party and was, like, you know, if I wear this shirt in the pool, is it going to, like, stick to my skin because I'm a chubby kid? Like. Like I've dealt oh, yeah. with self-image stuff a lot. Um, I've been super out of shape and super in shape, and it's something that's kind of always been a, a roller coaster for me. Um, and that's you know on the more physical side, but emotionally as well. Like I, I went through a dark, dark period of time in my life uh, where I lost pretty much all confidence um, in myself and just had this fear of really going all in and, and, and trying 100% at anything um, because of some things that had happened to me over time. And it was ultimately, I think, auditing the things that I was allowing to come in. So, I mean, it's basically law of attraction if you, if you break it down. Um, but things like I don't really watch TV. I definitely don't watch the news or listen to any type of news stuff, uh, but, but I don't really watch TV. The only stuff that I consume on a daily basis is like podcasts that are very positive, like informational, educational, motivational, that kind of stuff, um, or like different types of YouTube series. Um, like I'm really into Tom Bilyeu's stuff right now, like with Impact Theory that he has. All of his stuff is absolutely incredible. I was listening to some stuff today while I ran that was like, gave my, I had like chills over my entire body. Um, it's just really good stuff. Um, and audiobooks. Uh, I'm not a big reader, um, and that's kind of an interesting thing in itself. Like I understand the cliche, like not all readers are leaders, but all leaders are readers. But Every year I would say, like, I'm going to read this many books. And every month I would say, okay, I'm going to start reading this many books. And I just hate to read. Like, I just hate it. And I just don't well, comprehend. I just don't comprehend. I just don't, I don't learn well by reading. And so finally, it was this year where I just came to this realization. I was just like, I'm freaking not reading. Like, I'm not reading. I'm not going to do it. But I consume content. Like, I listen to books all the time. And I watch and I try to experience things. Like, that's the whole reason I have the podcast is I learn more from having conversations with people that have done cool things and great things than I could ever do from reading a book. I mean, I get a couple pages in. I'm just like, what I just read? Um, So I had to get rid of that mentality that I had to force myself to do something that I hate doing. It's ridiculous. Uh, But I think it's auditing all that stuff that's coming in. There's so much negative, and it may be people. It may be people that, you're, that you have in your circle of influence or that the people that you're around on a daily basis that are kind of bleeding into you just negative, um, negative things. 
and then replacing that with positive. Uh, it sounds mm-hmm. cheesy because it's like the most Mickey Mouse watered down version of the law of attraction <laughs> as it ever is, uh, as there ever has been. Um, but the secret, um, that, that movie and, and um, audio uh, book, and book, I just didn't read the book. Um, but that audio book, I didn't even have it on my phone. Like I had like the like this compact disc, the CDs. Um, and for an entire period of 12 months, uh, when I kind of pulled myself out of this dark place, it's the only thing I listened to was The Secret. Uh, I almost had it memorized, even the, even the accents that the different people used. Um, but it was just this laser focus on making sure that I didn't allow anything negative uh, come in to my brain and try to reinforce that by forcing positive stuff all the time. And what happened was amazing. Like everything started turning around. Relationships started getting better. Business started getting better. I started feeling better about myself because I eliminated all the negative stuff and, and focused only on the positive. And so my confidence right now is probably at an all time high, um, coming from a place that it was at an all time low just three and a half years ago. And I can truly, truly trace that back um, to that decision to just eliminate the negative things. Uh, And sometimes it's difficult, um, especially with people, eliminating people from your life. There's been uh, people that uh, just on a phone call where I've said, hey man, um, you know, I I gotta go and uh, this has been great. (laughs) But, uh, and then known in my head, like that's probably gonna be the last time I talk to that person. Um, Because every time I talked to him, it was negative and it was drama and it was this and that and I just, you only have so much capacity. And if you look at your brain in the framework of capacity, you're giving so much away to people and things and outside influences that it ends up to where you're working out of 60%, 70%, maybe even less because you're giving so much of it away. And so I just realized, like, I want to have the most capacity ever. Like, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I need all the help I can get. And so if I'm going to use my brain, uh, I want to use all of it. I don't want to use the 50% that's left over after everything else has been sucked by negative just nonsense. And so, um, so yeah, man, I think, I think that's it. I would just start auditing the things that you're allowing into your uh, life and start replacing that with positive things. Okay, yeah, no, I, that's definitely solid. I appreciate that. Yeah. The other, um, other thing, too, man, I just explained it to the guy that was on the other the, the uh, previous call, uh, but meditating has been a huge thing for me. Like, I made fun of it for a long time and didn't think I was someone that would ever get into it, but I've been doing it for nine days in a row, and just starting my day intentionally, um, whether that be meditation or, like, a workout or whatever, um, it's, it's way more important than I realized how... Um, starting your day um, on your terms, like you choosing how you start your day, not letting, you know, a fire happen that you got to like answer your email and there's a fire you got to go put out or you wake up and something crazy is going on at work or crazy is going on with the family or whatever, like starting your day uh, intentionally um, has been huge for me and just kind of setting the tone yeah. of the remainder of the day. So I would definitely look into that. If you're not meditating, I would definitely start doing that. No, definitely. Yeah. And, you know, I'd actually, I've been thinking about that because uh, I think it was yesterday you were, you were on one of your runs uh, yeah. and you were, you were talking a little bit about that on one of the videos you posted on Facebook. And that struck a chord with me. Yeah. I mean, I, the start of your day is, I mean, it's the foundation of your day. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the, oh, yeah. we'll take charge at that point. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree. Yeah. I mean, if your day point. starts off chaotic, guess what? <laughs> the rest of your day's not going to get any better. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, you should download, yeah. there's an app called Headspace. Great, there's an app called Headspace. Just download that. They've got these basic programs you start with. And it literally, like, because I thought, like, what the heck? Am I just going to sit and stare at the wall and feel awkward for 10 minutes? It, it, it teaches you how to do it. It teaches you how to breathe. It teaches you what to think about. It teaches you where to take your mind. And um, it's very, very, very helpful. Um, so it's not something that you're just all of a sudden jumping in the deep end where you're like, you know, trying to like stand on one foot and like hold these different crazy poses and, and like yelling out chants and having crazy music playing in the background and people yeah, like using yeah. a gong or something. I mean, but that's optional. That's optional, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's level 2.0. I mean, I, I hope yeah. to get there. But, yeah. but I love starting simple because that's the thing. Like you start simple, like 10 minutes. 10 minutes is nothing. Um, but... It took me a long time to get to start that 10 minutes, so. 
Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate your call, and, cool. and I really, again, I appreciate you engaging with the content. Like, I, I see the names that always pop up, and that's why when we were calling, I was like, oh, that's from my page. I know that guy. Even though I don't know you, yeah. I feel like I know you. Yeah. Oh, no, I, uh, I actually, uh, I interviewed for uh, the, the territory out oh, here nice. last week, so. Ah, very good. Maybe you will get to know me, you know. Maybe we'll so. Very good, man. I love that. <laughs> well, I will uh, keep me posted in that process for sure. Oh, will do, man. Hi, man. Take it easy. I yeah, appreciate man. you uh, giving me the call. Absolutely. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> I'm going to give you a question from Facebook uh, that we didn't get a number from. But, okay. So, Matthew uh, Brennan. Matthew Brennan? Yeah. Okay. He said, um, what single change did you make to your morning routine that impacted your life the most? I've been talking about that this whole time, Jason. Have you not been paying attention? I have, but he is a single. <laughs> so, the question is, what is the single, what, biggest different, biggest thing that single biggest change that I've made to my morning routine. All right, so we're going to end on this question because I think this is great. Um, and man, I love doing these live rounds of no hooks. So we're going to keep doing these more and more and more. Uh, but the single biggest change that I've made with my morning routine is having a morning routine. <laughs> like literally it sounds so simple, but I've never, ever, ever had any structure to my morning. It was just, I literally woke up in a like f sense of chaos. I'm immediately reaching for my phone and feeling like I was behind, feeling like I was late or rushed. To what? I don't know. Just to life, I guess. Um, like there's so much to do, there's so much to do. And I kept, and I would say that. Like I would literally say that out loud. Like, oh, I got so much to do. Oh, I got so much to do. It's the worst way to start your day. And so now, intentionally starting out my day, regardless of what that includes, but just starting it in the way I wanted to start it. So like, don't let someone tell you like, you gotta, your first 10 minutes of this, your second 10 minutes is this, your third 10 minutes is this, and then you can use the restroom, and then you can brush your teeth, and then you can do this. Like, it's your routine, it's your routine. But you set that up, and you're able to start your day the way you wanted to start your day. And when you start your day, the way you wanted to, it sets the course of the rest of your day. You're like, I'm living my life the way I want to live my life. Like I am going to go into this day the way I want to go into it and I'm going to own it and I'm going to crush it. And so for me, that's the 10 minute meditation, 10 minute of gratitude uh, journal where it's not like specific things that I'm journaling each time, every time, the same things. It's just whatever I particularly feel grateful for that day. And the cool thing is now I've got, you know, nine days in a row where I can look back and there are different things every day. Like some of them are the same, um, but some of them have been completely different uh, day to day. And it's just kind of whatever I'm feeling. And I've been also writing something at the end, um, just something that happens to be on my mind. Um, that takes 10 minutes, so 20 minutes total there. And then, um, and then start my day. And it's been life changing. It's, it's been, it's really, really been liberating and freeing uh, to start my day on my terms. So the biggest change uh, to my morning routine is actually having one. And if you don't have one, get one. And I told myself that for years and uh, finally have, and it's been a game changer. So, all right guys, thank you so much for joining us on the Sales Wolves podcast. We're probably gonna be doing this a little bit more frequently because we always get so much value uh, out of having these awesome conversations with awesome people. Uh, but with that, this is episode 72 of the Sales Wolves podcast, and I am your host as always, Tyler Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow! <laughs>